All right, so last night I made a fun video making popcorn, but that was kind of lame, and so I decided I'd try and do a serious video today. We'll see how bad the audio is. Um, so I've got this calculator. Calculator is a fancy printy thingy, um, and a lot of it's a lot of old calculators that had sort of ticker tape printing on them. And this one looks pretty simple, so it looks like I can figure out how it works. So uh, we will take apart this calculator today. Um, looks like to take it apart, there's just two screws. Um, one part here, so we will use the right screwdriver for the job. Um, I have tiny screwdrivers here too, but I don't think they're going to be needed. Because <laughs> this thing is damn old. The damn old things don't really have tiny screws. Because manufacturing back then was probably a lot more difficult. Alright, screws are free. Come to me. Yep. Alright, so, and there's a bunch of snaps around the edges uh, to open. So it's like. I'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver for that. Doo -doo. Oh man. This is gonna be fun. Alright, so. Two. Three. Oh, it's actually not nearly as bad as I thought. There we go. So which way are you supposed to come off? Yep. Oh, give it up. Hmm. Nope. I think these have to come off. Huh. They were, uh, they used to be blue. Now they're like a weird... Weird, gross, greeny color. Let's see here. So, that's what was holding it in before. Doot, doot. Doot, doot. Okay, so. <coughs> we have. So, we have a. Calculator I see do, 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 of some kind. Um, an El Cheapo keyboard with membranes and like hot steak melted points. Uh, voltage regulator. Crazy transformer. Not much info on that. Ah, there we go. There's info on here that doesn't look familiar to me, so we will just shove that back in there. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this thing. So it looks like we can just yank this out of here, and the whole thing's gonna come free. Um, I'll probably take everything out just to simplify things. I'll have to snip some wires. Meow. No. Hi, kitty. Meow. No. Kitty is no doubt going to make this more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> we will see. So I've got all the guts out. It looks uh, it looks pretty great in here uh, with probably decades worth of people uh, doing dust. But no, I thought I'd uh, show some neat things. So if you're ever designing like something made out of plastic and want to limit the amount of screws and time to assemble, um, it's fairly common when I take things apart to see little hooks and then little clips. And right, the same as the clips that were on the top housing here, right? So same with those clips. If uh, you do that with your circuit boards and things, then you don't need to buy screws, you don't need to do that stuff. Um, and the only drawback is you need to make holes for the, the molding so that it molds from underneath. 
Um, but also assembly becomes really easy because you just, you know, put the board in, snap it down, and hold in place. And they did something similar for the printer, um, but they just relied on gravity hold in place. So they had these little grooves here. Oh, kitty. <laughs> these little <laughs> mouth. These little grooves here, and then um, the rubber feet went in there, and just the sheer weight of this motor held it in place. So let's take a look at the other parts. So it looks like the printer works like clockwork. So as I turn this, which is driven by the motor on the bottom, you can see, let's see, that's not the full cycle yet. All right, so full cycle starts, it rotates all of these numbers. When it's done, it pulls it towards here and also advances the, uh, the ink ribbon. Once you go through, it stamps. Oh man, we should just power this. Um, and it runs through. So the only, um, I think the only electronics on here are um, the photo interrupter. So there's this guy here to figure out. Yeah, that's this little, this little wheel here that goes through that photo interrupter to figure out where it is. So the indexing. And I'm sure there's probably 10 in here when it snaps through. So that's the first piece. And the other piece, I believe, just as it's rotating around, um, stops the individual numbers from running. So let's see how that works. All right, it looks like there are little modules underneath that will hold. It'll hold the wheels from spinning at a particular time. So let's see if we can spot those here. Okay, so. If I take that off, this whole thing should move forward. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Well, that's <laughs> that's not any more informative. Mm. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't see much else. This might um, this might just need some logic testing to see because it looks like for every um, indexed wheel. There's just one of these ribbons. And I'm sure just driving the voltage high stops it from running. Um, this is a pretty simple, pretty simple printer. Oh, looks like I accidentally triggered something. There's, um, there's this white piece here. So let's do a full cycle. Oh, interesting. Okay. What if I run it in reverse? Nope. Oh. No, I have no idea what's going on now. It's making wonderful clicking noises though. There are little fingers deep in there. I don't know if you can see them. There. No, not my thumb. There are little fingers, right? in between each wheel. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I had to trick the microcontroller a little bit for testing, but it, uh, what I did was I pulled the ribbon cable out so that the motor wouldn't run, because the motor's on uh, this side. So those are the motor traces. So I unplugged it just a little bit and then entered numbers and slowly rotated this manually. And after a few turns, uh, it would register. I turned it off. Uh, or it's off now, so it's not going to show you. But uh, the little fingers in here do activate. So as this rotates around and the index hits where <coughs> the letter is supposed to be, um, the little fingers uh, activate and that stops the uh, disc from rotating. And then they let go once uh, they've hit the right, the right number. So at the beginning of each rotation, all of the digits, there we go, indexed to zero, 
thing go around. Um, I'm not entirely sure why when I run it backwards, certain digits lock. Um, that seems a little bit strange, but yeah, like here, I don't know why that happens. But uh, as long as they're running forwards, let's see here. There we go. As long as they're running forwards, it'll lock into place as the wheel rotates around. And that's how it chooses what letters, or sorry, what numbers and symbols to print. Alright, so final results from reverse engineering this. Everything seems to work off of 12 or 9 volts. Um, right now, uh, it's running off an old PC power supply, but uh, to stop one of the columns from turning, you just have to ground it out. So if we ground out, say, this one, you'll see it stops turning. Next one stops turning. And so if you just had a um, shift register or something, or uh, something capable of switching 12 volts um, over multiple channels, uh, you could uh, count the indexes on the, uh, the encoder, and then just stop them at the right moment, and have them print the right numbers. But that's it. Thanks for watching.